You know, for somebody that left their safe ass software developer job to make games full time, I've actually published a painfully low number of games. So I set out this week to change that and release another game that only my mom will probably end up playing. But I didn't want to do the usual thing I do which is just remake something somebody else thought of. No, this time I wanted to make something that I came up with all by myself. I wanted to challenge myself even more and decided that the game I come up with cannot be combat based. This got me thinking about an interesting fact about my game dev journey. I've never written a platformer. <gasps> which is like a rite of passage in the game dev world. I figured it would be a cool idea to make a platformer, but because I want to keep this challenge relatively short, I wanted to focus on a single mechanic and build a game around it. So a platformer with only one mechanic. It seems pretty obvious that the one mechanic has to be jumping. It would need some juice. I love ragdolls, so I decided the idea would simply be that there are platforms and you need to jump on them. Wow. What happens if you introduce ragdolls, insane jumping power, and interesting platforms? Well, let's find out. I brought in a character real quick and set it up with the ultimate character controller. I made it so that the character's movement multipliers are set to zero, so you can only rotate the character but not actually move around. Then I added a ragdoll and ragdoll ability to it, so when the ragdoll ability is active, the character disables its main collider and enables its ragdoll colliders and flops about like myself after a couple of drinks. Next, Next, I wrote a script for a custom jump ability that applies a force to all the ragdoll colliders when you press the jump button. Then I spent an hour playing around with my ragdoll jump because it's just too much fun, which probably meant I was on the right track. Now whilst this is a lot of fun, it introduces a problem. Because the force of your jump is always the same, it doesn't really leave much room for gameplay and I'd have to place all my platforms equal distances away from each other, which is pretty damn boring. Instead, I had the idea of a charge jump that increases the jump force the longer you hold the button down. This felt pretty cool, except there was no way to tell how powerful the jump was. So to change this, I went about adding a power bar. But for some reason, I decided that this was a good time to dive a little deeper into the world of shaders. You see, I wanted the power bar to move up and down like one you would find in a golf game. And I know you can do this pretty easily with some scripting and textures, but um, yeah, okay, I can't really think of a good reason beyond I really just wanted to try and do this with shaders. So I created a shader graph and used some interesting nodes to create a rectangle shape and duplicate it. Then I learned about gradients and UVs and how you can use them to subtract shapes from one another. And after a bunch of hours of fiddling, reading documentation and watching YouTube tutorials, I had this cool looking power bar and when you hold down the jump button, it fills up before starting to reduce again. And all of this with a shader graph. This made things feel much better, but it still kind of felt weird like this dude is just standing there and then shoots up off into the air randomly. I thought a jump animation might help make things feel a bit more natural. I found a cool jump animation on Mixamo, but I didn't want to use it in the traditional way that you use a jump animation. Instead, I would need to blend the animation with the current power of your jump, so your character looks like they're preparing to jump higher or lower based on the current power of the jump. With the jump all set up, I started working on some platforms. I added a basic platform that you can jump on and a finish line platform that loads up the game over UI and plays a victory animation when you win. I also added an invisible death platform for when you fall, which respawns you but plays a defeat animation. But this was where things started to get really fun. I thought it would be cool if there was a springy platform, one that shoots you off way into the distance. I added this helix model to the basic platform and created a quick spring animation. Then I wrote a script that activates the ragdoll jump ability but multiplies its force by some number that I decided on. I also added some VFX for when it triggers and this is what it looks like. I decided 10 levels would be a good number, so I got to work on adding more platform types. I added the slippery platform and created a quick texture to make it look like ice. I mean, kinda, I hope. But it was a good opportunity to learn an asset I've had for a while now called all-in-one VFX toolkit. I added a basic platform with a backboard that you can crash into. The backboard is destroyed when you do crash into it and it plays some VFX. I added some moving platforms and then some obstacles like these crusher spikes or this wall with a gap in it that you need to fly through. It felt cool but it was missing something that most good platformers have collectibles. 
I was looking through old Game Jam topics and found a cool one from the GMTK Game Jam a couple years back, which was dual purpose design. I thought I could use this idea with my collectibles and use them as a way to show people where to go in the level. I added these coins and when you collide with them, they play some VFX and give you 10 gold. I added trails of them to different areas of each of the levels and they felt great but also introduced a new problem. They have no benefit to the player. Like yeah, they show the player where to go, but that's more subconscious and not really something that actively benefits them. So I went with the Fortnite approach and added some skins and masks that you can buy with all the coins you collect. This took me way more time to make than I am proud to admit, but at least it gives you something to do with all the coins you collect, and overall just makes things feel a little more complete. And at this point, the game did feel mostly complete, but was missing a big part of what makes games feel good, sound. I added a whole bunch of sound effects and this final touch really made it feel like a finished game. That and some post processing effects which always make things look much nicer. With all of the fun stuff out of the way, I spent about an entire day making art for all of the stores and going through all the publishing processes for the mobile stores and itch.io. You can find links to everywhere in the description as well as affiliate links to all the assets I used to make it happen. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.